Let me give the floor to Father Alexandre Owen Melo, uh, Secretary of the Dicastery, appointed by the Holy Father in 2017. He was born in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. He's a priest since 20, 2001, member of the Stenta, the Fathers. He graduated and has a PhD in theology with a specialization in Mariology. So let me give him the floor. Father, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Gabriela. Dear families, bishops, priests, ladies and gentlemen, at the beginning of this forum, we have a provocative uh, question that we are going to uh, share with you. Where are we with Amores Letizia? Where do we stand with Amores Letizia? This is a very necessary question to evaluate the reception of a long synodal process of, on the family realized at the beginning of uh, Pope Francis pontificate. A brief introduction to start. Let me share with you a personal uh, testimony. In Rio de Janeiro, when I had the grace to accompany the Pope in uh, July 2013, on the occasion of the WYD there, he told me that it would be uh, good to have a synod to face such a challenge. As a matter of fact, the vocation and the mission of the family today was the first great team tackled in a synodal way in his pontificate. It was one of the first great intuitions pastoral intuitions of the Pope. And for that, he convened not one, but two synods in order to tackle all these challenges together. And I'm saying this to stress on the, um, on the attention the Pope uh, devotes to this theme. It is not just one more theme. It is a core preoccupation of the Pope that uh, is uh, collected in Amoris Laetitia. For that, as Cardinal said before, many on many occasions he has asked us uh, what we are doing as a dicastery for the pastoral implementation of Amoris Laetitia. In fact, the Apostolic Constitution's Episcopalis Communion, which uh, renewed in 2018 the uh, system of the sinners of the bishops, uh, envisions three stages, the preparatory, the celebrative, and the implementation phase. The third phase was not clear enough in the previous processes. And so the Pope now said we are now in the implementation phase. And we can say that as far as the uh, 2014 and 2015 synods, we are um, we are we are still not in the implementation stage, and our dicastery needs to accompany this phase. All the um, family year, Amoris Letizia, and in particular this forum and its provocative question uh, must be read in this uh, context. This uh, uh, question: Where do we stand in the implementation of Amoris Letizia? Was uh, central to organize this uh, uh, forum. And we sent a, a year ago a questionnaire to each uh, bishop's conference in order to take stocks, to make an examination of conscience and confront at the local level about the reception and the implementation of the apostolic exhortation. And uh, we, uh, we would like to thank the bishop's conferences for uh, sending us their answers. The, Secretary of the Sino tells us that not even them usually receive so many answers to their consultations 
uh, before uh, each synod, we are aware of the difficulties of this uh, consultative process that have to do with internal and external communication. And in particular, in an extraordinary time of pandemic in which we are still living. Now, it is not the time to dwell too much on this. Uh, however, the answers that we received were enough in order to have a significant, uh, a meaningful uh, sample that would allow us uh, to give you a synthesis of the status of question. Uh, the presentation uh, follows the order of the uh, questions uh, in the questionnaires. Uh, in order to give a framework to the bishops' conferences, which we did not have the chance to uh, to take stock, and the same applies to the uh, family and international movements and, and associations uh, present here. We hope that this will be uh, useful. I realize that this synthesis is very tight and incomplete before the richness of the uh, answers that we've received and all the work uh, done uh, along these uh, five years. But I hope this will serve as a starting point for the reflection that will uh, carry out at this forum. Let me also tell you that in general, I am not going to tell you where the, uh, the answers uh, came from in order to avoid unnecessary comparisons and in order not to hinder uh, valuable efforts. Now, the first question was, uh, what was done in order to put into practice the apostolic exhortation of Maurice Lit and the question is divided into three sub points. How was it uh, welcome and what was the impact it had in the family pastoral care? It, generally speaking, we can say that the reception of Maurice Letizia was marked by an ambivalent uh, acceptance. On the one hand, joy, hope, and gratitude for the pastoral nature of the document, its attention to uh, the daily family life, as well as the um, consideration of the family as protagonist of the pastoral care and its openness uh, to situation of fragility. Uh, some families were surprised that when knowing how much the Pope, uh, how much families means to the Pope in their daily life and some episcopal conferences were very enthusiastic about the document and started implementing it straight away and there was also enthusiasm on the side of the faithful in so-called irregular situations on the other side many particular churches um, identify some interpreting difficulties, especially as far as chapter eight is concerned. And the, the logic of the pastoral mercy, one conference says that uh, some criticize the excessive reference to love in the document and not to the uh, theology of the body. Others uh, indicate that uh, some lay groups uh, rejected some aspects of the exhortation as to the impact, uh, the pastoral impact of the exhortation, it was ambivalent. Some say it was uh, uh, weak, others said that it was uh, slow, but uh, timely, others said it was a uh, little, uh, not too clear, but the majority started to, to update their pastoral family, pastoral care um, processes, like the formation of uh, priests, uh, of seminarians, pastoral agents, how to accompany difficult cases. On the other hand, in many uh, places, after initial enthusiasm with meetings, gatherings for formation and publications uh, on this theme, uh, what was lacking was a systematic study and a deeper review of the pastoral processes. In general, there is a great, uh, there is great unknowledge a great lack of knowledge of the exhortation on the part of the families. 
But those family that knows the exhortation really loved it. And then I see a meaningful impact was the um, enlargement of the categories to which the family pastoral care is uh, uh, directed. More attention was devoted to certain realities that are considered as taboos, like uh, uh, couples living together, um, particular uh, trouble situations, uh, or families separated due to migrations, uh, families of migrant peoples, uh, and uh, viewers. And the second part of this first um, uh, question, a review of the uh, family pastoral care was uh, uh, carried out in the light of Maurice Letizia. In some conferences, a national plan for family pastoral care is being prepared with with guidelines uh, and orientations uh, for uh, pastoral agents at local level. A com an African conference envisioned a, a five-year period to review their pastoral, family pastoral care um, system. In Latin America, uh, some uh, point out the renewal and the deepening of the whole uh, family pastoral care work. In different conferences, uh, much attention is being devoted to the preparation of the sacramental wedding, and reviewing their methodology starting from Amoris Letizia. Uh, even if not always in a formal way. In some places, the exhortation helped to review also the uh, catechetical itineraries and the youth ministry uh, simulated by a transversal work with different pastoral entities like, like youth, uh, vocational, uh, etc. Some other conferences deepen the exhortation devoting uh, part of their plenary assembly others uh, published pastoral letters about the exhortation and a special edition of Amoris Letizia was uh, commented by the family department of the same uh, bishop's conference. Others have published documents about the preparation to, uh, to marriage. More orientations and guidelines were published in order to apply chapter eight. As it has been said, in some conferences, more attention uh, has started to be devoted to, uh, to particular categories like um, the elderly, uh, widows and widowers, um, single parent family, uh, families with them, um, uh, we challenge the children, etc. A conference from Asia started a program in collaboration with the government in order to reach out to uh, families living in rural areas. And some conferences stress on unconditional uh, acceptance and, and welcoming with listening and accompanying people in uh, uh, disadvantaged situations. So the third part of this uh, uh, question was uh, which new initiatives, uh, pastoral initiatives have been implemented? Some particular churches have started reviewing the so-called courses in preparation for marriage in order to establish a true catechumenal process for uh, for marriage life and the intention is to boost to promote those uh, long-term approaches with the formation of family groups and um, another organization organized a financial itinerary of personalized and customized accompaniment for the sacrament of marriage however pamphlets and uh, uh, sheets and uh, explicatory studies were also published in order to better explain the exhortation. Sometimes these materials are accompanied by formation courses or training courses for pastoral agents or families in the parishes. In many places, the methodology of presentation of these materials is accompanied with creativity 
by different types um, um, of audiovisual technologies. One, uh, some conferences also published an application guide um, of uh, Morris Letizia for priests and seminarians. The good practice of accompanying the uh, engaged couples is being consolidated uh, by the forming mentors or family um, consulting entities and uh, parish meetings are being organized for the families. The parish reality seems to be particularly adequate for the application and implementation of Amoris Letizia. And uh, one conference speaks of a project that uh, trains missionary uh, couples. Another one promotes uh, ecumenic prayer uh, gatherings. And an active methodology is also uh, sought after where the engaged couples will uh, take the leading role. As to the composition of ecclesial structures, organisms of uh, family pastoral care at the national diocese and par parish level have been uh, established. One European conference says that they started a department for the family in uh, 2021. Amen. Another in Asia tells us uh, that uh, they have created um, family groups in charge of the family pastoral care. Another created a pastoral council for the family. And in, in other realities, the lady uh, work with the uh, family pastoral care work and receive a, a remuneration for that. In some countries, new ecclesial uh, tribunals were were open and they are studying actively the exhortation. And then uh, a judiciary pastoral work was created in, other, in another reality in order to regularize uh, the marriages. And then the pastoral accompaniment of uh, the couples in crisis in uh, some countries um, in Eastern Europe. And uh, in other realities, it, the presence of uh, uh, family orientation services, presence is quite strong. Services of accompaniment and uh, uh, orientation to women who had uh, miscarriages uh, have also been uh, um, established or uh, on sexuality and education to affectivity and sexuality. And an African conference started a program uh, of five years on the usage of natural methods for family planning. One conference promoted a three-year initiative dedicated to motherhood and fatherhood, another one to the elderly and solidarity and intergenerational um, solidarity. So three years are dedicated to these three uh, themes. And another conference published a document when there are people with uh, this capacity. Disability. So many, many initiatives, thank God. Which difficulties? Well, there are external factors like the uh, like consumerism, the lack of time in the families, and the lack of pastoral agents to devote to formation and spirituality, migration, which sometimes divides families, the resistance or lack of interest in of the same families to become active subjects of the pastoral care. And um, some communication means uh, criticized the, 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 uh, the chapter, the eighth chapter of the document. On the other hand, there are uh, other factors uh, internal uh, to the church. 
like for example that many communities are aging or that there are irregular families that are still looked in a negative way some conferences uh, say that the attention to these kind of uh, couples uh, can be a reason for scandal another example the confusion in the interpretation of chapter eight of the document or other themes addressing the uh, document and then the lack of personal and pastoral conversion the resistance to change the lack of formation and training and motivation of uh, pastoral agents as well as the lack of pastoral uh, means and financial resources and also the difficulties with translations to native languages In one case, a conference says that we translated the material, but not much was done afterwards. And then the lack of resources. So another conference states this very clearly to publish and distribute the text to uh, pastoral agents. What did you need more in order to better apply Maurice Letizia? In general, the need of a, a greater formation and training on family pastoral care for priests and lay people, especially the mentors. And uh, what is needed is a broader, uh, a broader look as far as the family pastoral care is concerned and integrate all this more in the dioceses and the different movements. And it is also perceived a lack of ecclesial capacity to attract young people, the need of a missionary conversion and to speak a more lay um, language and then a more quality dissemination sorry, the dissemination of more quality material. Some uh, uh, bishops conferences uh, still are still asking more, uh, more clarifications on how to interpret the document, especially chapter eight. Another conference uh, says that the, what is missing is uh, some guidelines on uh, uh, some pastoral situations that are not contemplated directly in Amoris Letizia, like a concerted uh, marriage or dowry system and some other uh, aspects linked to patriarchal systems. How did the Bishop's Conference react to the pandemic that we're living in? The pandemic stressed the importance of digital tools for the encounter among families and their training, also to send uh, useful materials. The online meetings and the gatherings have become a very much disseminated uh, tool to, to, to work together. In general, it, the bishops' conference in general adhered to the gov governmental indications. And uh, some say that the families prayed more together and, the, and that the church privileged in other uh, realities, individual accompaniment. In other countries, uh, digital campaigns for families and children were uh, established. And another speaks of a greater participation of the family in the domestic church. The pandemic also contributed to valuing the family as a domestic church and its role to cultivate spirituality and community. Many uh, marriage celebration were postponed and the most vulnerable people were accompanied in general by specialized uh, services. Uh, there were more donations and more participation of voluntary uh, of volunteers. Institutions like um, Caritas, San Vicente de Paul, 
and others have been very active in uh, almost all countries. Uh, support to the elderly and the poor is uh, mentioned. In uh, those countries where the uh, pastoral care of the elderly is well structured, so a more direct contact uh, was observed with the elderly. And a conference uh, pursues the objective that the same elderly be uh, digital missionaries and prayful missionaries for the families. And, uh, and the Dia de los Abuelos was established. Um, subsidies for the creation of the deal of the abuelos was asked and there was a support ecclesial support also in situations of emergency like uh, homeless people vulnerable people uh, people who need to 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 work etc uh, handicapped people are probably those who suffered the most from lockdown and isolation in some places, they uh, they had the uh, some kind of a support uh, via telephone or via internet. One conference says that they have uh, um, they have encouraged people with this capacity to live their fate at home through meetings, uh, online meetings, and prayers. And an important role was played by Catholic schools and their educational services in presence and remotely, keeping the relationship with the families alive. A conference says that during the pandemic, uh, online meetings were successfully uh, organized with the parents and children about their education to affectivity and sexuality, which uh, were uh, celebrated at home and not at school. We are approaching the end. The last um, last question, there are tools or, or family uh, pastoral care uh, practices experimented throughout the pandemic that can be proposed after the health emergency is uh, over. Well, the pandemic inaugurated a different way of working and uh, made creative pastoral creativity grow. The online uh, some conferences ask themselves whether the online means are really adequate in order to evangelize. Other conferences kept working through traditional means of communication like the radio and the TV. However, the bishops' conferences in general believe that uh, the developed tools, especially digital tools for uh, meetings, uh, formation and accompaniment of uh, the families uh, during the months of the pandemic uh, will be used also in the future. Many have discovered that online meetings uh, save you money, time and travels. But there is a need to, uh, you know, to, 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 to mix presential pastoral care and the online one. And then the digital divide, you know, of the elderly people was reduced at this time of pandemic because many people have learned how to use digital tools, which they didn't do before. And the domestic church, is likely to be valued very positively also in the future and it's a potential as well and as well as uh, some campaigns and projects realized during the pandemic in uh, many places a, that a simple uh, message was retrieved that the uh, family that prays together um, stays together so finally, all the whole service offered to the most vulnerable will continue because it is necessary to look forth, to go forth, to reach out to the most vulnerable people was an experience uh, 
proper of this uh, time of pandemic. But of course, uh, in order to continue, we need to uh, to empower lay people, the family and the young. By way of conclusion of this uh, synthesis, it was very quick and, I uh, quick and I apologize for speaking so quickly. We realized that much was done in order to implement Amoris Letizia. However, there's still much to do. All in all, this is a very heterogeneous process based on the diocese and the families. Not all the themes relating to the family pastoral care were developed sufficiently in the dioceses and the parishes. And many families still have not been touched by the exhortation. There are different kinds of difficulties that needs a more decisive application. In particular, the scarce reference to some areas made us reflect and led us to, uh, to, to choose some concrete themes for this forum. The criteria was to identify some fields that can feed the families from within in order to put in place, first and foremost, an evangelizing um, effort, as we read in Amoris Letizia number uh, 200. In other words, we need to help the families live within the necessary conversion for a new uh, thirst of evangelization in the church. That's why in these days, the forum, a forum, we're going to reflect together on these themes that we have chosen. So since we cannot tackle all the themes in Amoris Letizia, we have chosen these areas. And we hope to be able to, uh, to take the most out of this forum. So thank you for your attention and I wish you all a fruitful forum.